Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Soundbites Cases. In these short educational video modules, we hope to cover a range of topics in basic and advanced ultrasound applications. It's my hope that through these ultrasound videos, we'll be able to improve the clinical care that we can provide to our patients at the bedside and come to the diagnosis more rapidly than using traditional testing. So without further delay, let's get right into today's module. So let's discuss the celiac axis, which is the very first major branch of the abdominal aorta. And here's a pictorial to the right showing the IVC to the right of the paired aorta shown here to the left. And we note here the hepatic artery and splenic arteries, the major branches of the celiac axis. The left gastric artery is usually very small and not visualized well on bedside ultrasound. Here's a video clip of the celiac axis in action, and we'll begin by identifying our first very important landmark for bedside ultrasound of the aorta, and that is the spine. Notice it has a hyperechoic or bright signature as shown here by the small indicator arrow. Now we'll be looking just anterior to the spine for the IVC as shown here to the patient's right, and the aorta as shown to the patient's left side. Notice as we scan through the aorta, we see the celiac axis or the seagull sign coming off and that would be made up of the going to the right side, the hepatic artery, and to the patient's left, the splenic artery. So the seagull sign here, well seen on bedside ultrasound. Now let's move on to the second major branch of the abdominal aorta as shown here in the pictorial to the right, which is the superior mesenteric artery. Here we see the aorta and IVC, and notice the superior mesenteric artery just anterior to the aorta with a pronounced bright or hyperechoic rim. We also see the splenic vein arching just anterior to the SMA. Let's look at a video clip that puts it all together, beginning with the celiac axis shown there, and now we're moving on to the superior mesenteric artery. So celiac, seagull, and there, superior mesenteric artery, and we can actually see the renal arteries coming off the aorta just below the superior mesenteric artery. So here I'll freeze it and again we'll remember that the spine is our very important landmark and notice that hyperechoic bright rim and on top of the spine we see the aorta and anterior to the aorta we see the superior mesenteric artery with its bright or hyperechoic rim. We can actually see the right renal artery well seen here coming off the aorta and the left renal vein to the left of the aorta as shown here. So next we'll look at the aorta all the way down to bifurcation. We'll begin by looking at a freezed image with the spine, our very pronounced hyperechoic landmark, and the aorta just anterior scanning inferiorly and we'll notice here that the abdominal aorta branches into the paired iliac arteries. Now this usually occurs just at about the level of the umbilicus in most of our patients. And here I'll freeze it down again and we see the spine posteriorly and just on top of that the paired iliac arteries right and left. And it's important to look at that as some aneurysms will extend all the way down into the iliac artery. Here we're going to put it all together and start from a position high in the abdominal aorta and there's the celiac axis, next superior mesenteric artery, their renals, and notice that the abdominal aorta becomes more superficial as it moves more inferiorly. And we see here the bifurcation into the paired iliac arteries. So again, from the top, we see the celiac or seagull moving down, the SMA, and there's the renal arteries. And here we're looking as the, as the abdominal aorta becomes more superficial, and there's branching into the paired iliac arteries. So a complete aortic exam. So thanks for tuning in to today's installment of Soundbites Cases. It's my hope that through this educational series, I'll be able to get out to you a number of ultrasound learning pearls that you can take to the patient's bedside tomorrow to improve clinical care and to arrive at the diagnosis more rapidly than using traditional testing. So I hope to see you in the future as Soundbites Cases returns and as we move on to discuss a range of interesting topics in bedside ultrasonography.